All right, we are live. A little bit of a large, late start. I had to get some stuff, uh, get some stuff ready, get some images up. So today I am working on my Destiny Titan armor. Uh, first up, welcome to the show. Uh, so far, titled Propaganda, a show where I build things in the shop and you ask me questions, or just come and hang out and uh, shoot the crap with me about whatever I'm making. So, uh, last time I was working on <clears throat> this guy, painting up the Immortan Joe mask. So I got him all done and completed, just got that taped up back there. Got the hoses on, got them padded, got it strapped. So, let's see the little camera up there. There we go. Now I'm ready to ride forth into Valhalla. Ugh. All right. Fun story, as I was gluing the padding in and trying it on, I thought I gave the glue ample time to dry, and instead, I glued my nose inside the mask. So I gotta sit there. Luckily, my shop mate, Bill Duran, Punish Props, uh, has some stuff called Uncure for super glue, and I had to use that on my nose to get the glue off. So that was a fun experience. Always make sure the glue's dry before you shove something on your face. Do as I say, not as I do. It's a true professional there. All right, uh, let's see. So getting started, um, if you've been following me on Facebook, uh, WM Armory, uh, I started working on the chest piece, so I got these patterns, and these are attempt number two. Uh, hold on just a second here. Uh, I have the chat window up on my tablet now, so I can try to see things a little better and take away some of the uh, strain on my poor computer. So, we're going to try this today. Let's see how well this works until it all falls apart. That's the plan. All right, here we go. Uh, no, not too much. The uh, uncure stuff. So uh, we got to somebody asking if any of the skin came off. It just got a little irritated. Luckily, that uncure stuff helps uh, dissolve any of the adhesive. So, all right. So let's start talking about foam fabricating armor. I'm sure, a lot of you are interested in foam fabricating armor. I know myself. And uh, my shop mate included a lot of questions about it. Uh, we both got ebooks out on fabricating with foam. Uh, so I'm going to cover some of the things when making any prop, really, out of uh, whatever material you choose, is, uh, especially foam, is you're looking at it and you want to try to figure out the layers. How many layers? Because when you're working with foam, you're adding layers of foam uh, to create the detail and the depth. So what I had to do, and let me swap over here to monitor. Uh, actually, I can pull up. Let's see. Let's pull up an image here. That is way too small. I'm going to jump on over to Facebook and pull that out so we can see. Uh, so I posted these pictures. So starting on this chest piece, I was looking at it and there is, of course, there's the undersuit, which I could have done it of a very thin foam and had a lot of detail and whatnot, but I opted for comfort, so I went with moisture wicking fabric, which is going to be sewn by my wonderful girlfriend because I have zero talent at sewing. Uh, so we did that, and we're just going to have uh, padding sewn into that. Uh, I can't answer too many questions on sewing because it is not my area of expertise, so my focus is on the armor. So let me pull up, uh, what is that? Here we go. There's a picture of my Titan. Uh, let me swap over the camera here. Uh, Alright. So, wow, that's, that's not good. Okay. Ah, there we go. So we look here and we see the Titan. Look at this chest piece. So this part here, underneath, in between this, this belt, that's going to be fabric. And the chest piece, uh, let's look at this full screen. This chest piece here, if you look underneath and right on top here, there's kind of this padding under armor, and then over top of that, you've got this plate, and it has this strap that kind of comes down there, and these little straps that go over top. 
So I'm going to do this under layer right here. You can kind of see in the sliver. And if you move the armor around, you can kind of see it too. Especially in different shaders, you can see it better. So I've decided that's going to be the first layer, and then I'm going to put these armor plates over top of it. Now, to help me figure out the shape of this main plate on the chest here, uh, I had, uh, or I, I asked, uh, uh, Bill Duran, a Punished Props, a wife, uh, who they're both 3D modelers and very good at it, uh, if she could help me rip the file uh, offline and to make a Pepakura file of it. So she helped me out and I got this shape here. And while this is not exact to what I'm going to do, it still gives me a general idea. Uh, I'm not too familiar with Pepakura, but there's a lot of YouTube tutorials. Uh, you can do the viewer is free or you can buy the program so you can modify Pepakura files. So I got just the chest piece here and I put that together and I'm going to make this maybe a little larger because this is just scaled for paper, but since foam is thicker, I'm going to have to modify this guy here so you can see that camera there. Let's, uh, I'm talking about something else. I made this piece here, sorry. So this guy here is that, you can see that chest piece with that very circular, uh, that uh, crescent shape. So. I uh, had her help me make this and the under piece here, and it's a little, it's just slightly too small, and it's, it's, they take into consideration this is going to be made out of paper. Some people will apply resin and fiberglass to this and then just go from there and sand that down. But I'm going to make this all out of foam, so I'm going to have to modify this a little bit to, to account for the thickness of the foam. And that's going to go over that other piece, and I have the buckles on the side that are going to come around here. So uh, I'm still modifying this chest piece. The first one was trash. Uh, whenever you're foam fabricating, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, I made a lot of mistakes, and I, I anticipated that the first one I was going to do was a, a junk piece to, to make a pattern. And when you're doing that, I suggest you get the really cheap stuff, like the Harbor Freight EVA foam, so that that way it, you don't worry about trashing it because it's it's cheaper, lower quality foam. Uh, let's think sleep here. So, someone's asking the name of the shoulder armor. So, the shoulder armor in the picture that you saw of my Titan, that's actually from the Vault of Glass Raid. So, it's uh, meant to be themed kind of like a ball. If I take the shader off, it's got that kind of nice coppery cabal. Not cabal, sorry. Vex, the robot people. It's the robot people. Uh, it's got that kind of coppery kind of look like they have, and it's, it's meant to be themed kind of like uh, the, the Vex, uh, the robot people in Destiny. So that's where that's from. The chess piece is from the very first release of Destiny. It was the Vanguard gear you could get. The helmet is my Dead Orbit helmet, uh, which was also very early on a uh, helmet model they uh, reused a bit. It's also the same base model helmet used by uh, Lord Saladin, or Salad Bowl, as I've heard some people call him, uh, who does the Iron Banner. And the legs are the DLC 1 uh, legs that you can get from the Vanguard. So it's a mixed match. Um, I didn't uh, want to do an entire... I couldn't find a set that I wanted to do the entire thing. I liked this and I liked that. So I mixed and matched it, which is great about Destiny, and you can totally do that. So I mixed and matched it, and that's what I'm doing. And right now I'm going to work on the chest piece, because in my opinion that's one of the more complicated pieces. So, so looking here... Uh, actually, let's talk about my torso form before I go any further. Get some water out, mouth's getting dry. Uh, what questions do we have? Uh, I am eventually going to do a helmet, and uh, I am not going to do it out of foam. Um, I am going to sculpt and cast that, and uh, I will offer kits. Um, but yeah, that is going to be a sculpt and cast piece, and I'm going to do that exact same helmet you see there. That base model is common and used in other, other models, so... Um, there's probably about four base models I've seen for helmets, and they build things off of that, or use that. Um, <clears throat> use those existing four base models. Yes, they will be kits available with uh, visors. And part of the reason that I chose the helmet I did is a lot of the early Destiny stuff, uh, visibility is always an issue, and a lot of the stuff either had no visible visor, or it had a little visor right here. So uh, I don't have an eye there, so it's really difficult to see. Um, my shop man and I played around with the ideas of doing crazy mirrors to do some like periscope effects, but then realized we're probably going to throw up in our helmet. Uh, don't want to do that. So um, I found that model, which if you look, the visor actually comes right over the eyes. And while I won't have peripherals, I'll still be able to see in front of me. Uh, I'll still have some vision. And 
so it's, it's better than none. So I went with that model, and I also liked the look of it. I thought it was pretty cool. And it's got a lot of little pieces and attachments you can put over it. Um, and it, it looks like something I, I figured that I could easily sculpt up and, and do a, a kit out of. So uh, that probably is going to be after PAX Dragon Con time for I'm going to do that. For right now, I'm just going to focus on the armor, and I'm just going to do my model up like my, uh, or do my face up like my, my character model, which is a mohawk as well, and uh, also has some kind of cool eye tattoo thing. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to look all like... I'm going to shave off my goatee, uh, and I'll, I'll go all, like, gruff paramilitary look with the tattoo. So, and I'll just act like I'm chilling in tower. And I've also got the hammer, which I'll be carrying with me, this big guy. So I did this on the earlier streams. I worked on this guy. Uh, this is the solar hammer for the new subclass for Titans that's coming out for Destiny. So this guy is all foam floor mats, except for the uh, dowel, which runs through here to give it some uh, support. So the painting process on this was four coats of Plasti Dip, uh, three coats of primer, uh, two passes of wet sanding up to 600, and then I went over it with black primer, and then I did two coats of the silver using the Design Masters paint. And you can find all those supplies uh, on my website. I list those, all the, all the painting supplies. Um, and you can also find uh, those supplies in my ebook on uh, painting, film props, and costumes. So I'll go all over that on my website. And you can find that right underneath my channel there. I have all my links. Go check that out. All right. So now let's get into the torso and uh, how I, I got that that I'm working off of right now. Uh, first, I'll some stuff out of the way here. A lot of people are showing making hammer time jokes. That's half the reason I made the hammer was because of all the jokes. Alright. Ooh, the camera. Sweet new setup I got, a little armature thing here. Move this all around. There we go. Boom. All right. All right. So here's the torso. So you can see this is actually the original material. It's like this kind of knits. Uh, and this was for like an apartment store or something. Um, apartment store for sewing or something, depending on. But uh, it was a display mannequin, and it's nice and squishy. Uh, so you can pin things in it, which is really great. Um, but it was too small. So what I ended up doing was I took this roll of bubble wrap that I got um, from uh, Lowe's, with the thin bubble wrap sheets, and some duct tape, and I used a tape measure to measure myself. So I measured my waist, and I measured my torso, my chest, my upper body chest, and then I started just patting in foam and strips, putting it around here, and then just duct taping them on, and then measuring it as I went to make sure until it was bolted up to about where so that's about my torso there. And it's not exactly the perfect shape, but it, it's extremely close and it's good enough to work off of. So I went with that. Uh, so that's how I got this guy. And I duct taped it around, covered it once I got all the bubble wrap on there, added a little bit to the shoulders. And then, uh, so it was something to start working off of. And then I got the uh, masking tape here, this kind of cheap stuff and a marker, and I had my reference material up. The great thing is you can go on to Bungie.net if you have the Destiny game, and you can look at models of armor, and you can view them in 3D, and you can move them around, zoom in, zoom out, and it gives you a great reference. It's a very low poly, so it's, it's very like 8-bit quality, but it still gives you a great shape. So I used a Sharpie marker, and I just started drawing on this guy. You can kind of see the pen marks on there. Started drawing on him and just kind of looking back and forth and, and getting my, my marks and my baselines. And then I went over with this really cheap masking stuff and I started masking off, and you can see more on this side, the torso here. And then I got this is kind of a crappy quality duct tape, by the way. Since I'm covering a large space, I don't want to get like the nice actual brand duct tape or duck tape. Um, and then I got the white stuff here, a different color. And then I started taping off this area here, and then very lightly I just cut through the top layer there with my little X-Acto hobby knife here. 
And I peeled that off and I used this poster board, which I got at Michael's. And I laid that down there, I think it's already trashed. Uh, and I got these first test pieces. As you can see on these test pieces, I've already added some, I've made notes that I need to extend here. I made sure to write this is the back right. And I cut it into four pieces, so there's two back pieces, which go like that, and wraps around the back. And then there's two front pieces on the chest, which go like that. So because this is going to be seamed, I added these little registration marks. So every inch and a half, two inches, I made this little groove. So that way when I draw the line, I have these little hatch marks here. And when I line these two pieces up, on both sides, I know I'm lining it up perfectly because this has a bit of a curve to it. So then it dishes it. So I pulled those tape pieces off, put those on there. I got a test piece. I taped it all together, quickly crappily glued it just to fit it on me and kind of see where it was tight, where it needed to be stretched out, where I needed more space. Um, and accounting for the fact that the foam is thicker, so when it's curving over something, uh, you have to, to kind of add a little bit anywhere it's wrapping around because um, you're going to lose some length as you're curling around stuff. So this needed to be a little taller. And then I needed to extend these straps, and then I needed to add a little bit on the side there. Uh, but after uh, some time, I realized I added too much to the sides, so I need to take some off. So after playing around, I'm at uh, 2.0 right now. And that's this guy right here, which uh, the duct tape failed catastrophically last night. I came in this morning to this just on the floor. So uh, there we go. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to wear the parachute pants for my tight and do the hammer time dance. <laughs> So I'm going to duct tape this guy back on. And then I'm going to start drawing on this based on my material here. Happy duct tape. There we go. Nope, nope, totally bounced right back up. There. about this armor is there's no LEDs. I don't have to do any kind of lighting and I am extremely happy about that. While I can do lighting and soldering, I don't like to. It's kind of a pain in the ass. See what I'm doing. Stuck taping this guy up. And I can stick him on the torso and I can start drawing. One thing I have to figure out still is uh, what I'm going to do for paint. What I'm going to do for paint scheme. Got to figure that out.
my girlfriend wants me to do the Prism Dancer shader, which is basically purple and gold with zebra print. One of the new DLC 2 shaders you can get from the Queen's Guard. Uh, and while I don't mind doing purple, I'm definitely not going to take the time to paint on zebra print. So, uh, I'm not doing that one. And I might do my own modification of the shader. Or I might do the one I have up there, which is, uh, what is it? It's called, um, Blacksmith. Yeah, that was the one that they had at uh, E3. You get it there, or you can get that shader from, uh, what is it? Early reserving Call of Duty? Either way, I have an uh, awesome friend who stayed in line for me for a long time to get that, and thank you so much. So I now have my fancy shader. All right. That kind of tastes like poop. All right. Let's see what questions we got in the chat here. I am definitely not the guy to ask lighting questions. Uh, although, I will say, if you're interested in Arduinos and lighting and wiring, Kamui Cosplay uh, has a book that gets pretty into depth on the electrical stuff. Um, not too com it's not complicated, but it gets, it gets more into depth like Arduinos and lighting and some very simple stuff. Uh, you can get it, uh, her ebook, on uh, her website there, Kamui Cosplay. Uh, if you want the simpler, more um, kind of uh, a little more, um, uh, I'd say, uh, just finding and tearing apart your current existing lights or, or just simple soldering, just kind of the basics to get your foot in the door with the lighting, then check out my shop mate's book, Punish Props. He uh, has one on lighting and strapping. It's his uh, volume two, his ebook. You can get that at his website, or I have it on my website, an affiliate, link, uh, affiliate program there. Um, and that one goes into the lighting. But if you really want to get into Arduinos and stuff, then Kamui Kazu plays a book into that. Got some awesome ebooks. Go check them out. Okay, so let's see. Let me pull up my reference here. Let's see, that's close up to the side of my face. Sorry. I'm still getting used to this whole where the camera is thing. All right. So look at this guy. Zooming in here, I got monitor type two. So I think this is actually, well first off, this is too wide. And even trying this on, I feel like this needs to kind of be tapered in. So I'm gonna use my little rule right here. This is a quick, cool little metal six inch ruler. And I'm going to take this off. I'm gonna take this much off either side. Now that doesn't seem like much, but when you do it on both sides, I'm actually taking off that much, twice as much. And uh, I'm gonna take out this front half here, so. And then I actually cut this loose to the back. And it's very much trying to process. All right. So before I go any further, I want to taper that and bring that in. I want this to fit pretty comfortably here. So I'm going to do that, bring that in, and then I'm going to start tapering this because I think this needs to come up a bit higher. So when I put this on here, it could be up there, but this should be up to about here. So I'm going to bring that up, and I think I might even bring the back up a little more. So, oh God, excuse me when I throw stuff everywhere. Right. So, let's sharpen this. So, I'm going to roll today. Okay. 
throwing crap everywhere. Bring this back some. Oh god, what have I done? There we go. Oh god. I hope no one gets motion sick. Boop. Okay. So, can't recommend these guys enough. These are uh, the snap off blades. But, sorry. This guy is what makes it all worthwhile is because I can use this one blade for a very long time because I'm keeping it sharp. And to do that, this little blade here, this is a Kershaw sharpener. Uh, you can see these on my Amazon affiliate links. Uh, post about this guy a lot. Recommended to me by a uh, foam fabricator, Evil Ted Smith. There's a lot of awesome YouTube videos. Um, but they are sharpening little sharpening thing for razor blades that works well for knives but it works wonderfully and instead of going through a blade per sheet of foam I can use one blade for weeks and then make it last so but to do so you want a little bit of WD-40 or something to, to lubricate when you're sharpening quick little spritz and you sharpen that a bit. I don't really count but maybe about like 10 20 times on the other side just give it a nice sharp Sharpening. Extra crap off the blade there. Now, I guess maybe a bit too much room on the shoulders still. I thought that was too much room there. Yeah, a little bit too much room on the shoulders. You can see a gap right back there. I'm just going to take a little bit off the shoulder next. Let's do that. I'm just going to pop one of these guys off. Put this back on the side of here. This doesn't have to be perfect, just close enough. It's just a test fit. Now if I cut this guy up too much, or modify it too much, I can always use it to create another pattern to work off of. So like I said, having extra foam is always useful. Not being afraid to, to use up materials. Because you're going to, to make mistakes, or you're going to have to remeasure things, or it's always nice to have extra materials in your life and that stuff. So I'm going to, oh, that X is here, UPS or whatever. So, just gonna tape myself in. So this is where having an assistant would be cool. Can't see anything. <laughs> All right. So now that I've got this on, I'm going to test it by sliding that in and figuring out what feels nice. So I think right about there. Very 
So I'm going to take this marker. Right there. That's not exactly the same thickness as this ruler. To measure how much that is, or about that thick. Using this metal ruler as a guide. Let's reach out to the chat there. What do you guys think I should do for a shader for this set of armor? What color scheme? If you're not familiar with Destiny, then just throw some colors out there. What do you think would look good? Should I stick with the picture I put up on my Facebook, which is the blacksmith shader? Should I go all out crazy? Do something like Aurora Blur or Prism Dancer, which looks more like it should be on a Saints Row game. Should I do a faction theme? What do you guys think I should do? One of the Queen's shaders? Now, one of the Queen's guard shaders or one of Varix's shaders, the uh, Fallen guy? He's got some pretty cool shaders. I have to say, his are probably some of the best in the game. Pretty cool. I have been looking at his Kingslayer shader, which I think is Kingslayer. It's that cool uh, yellow shader. Sometimes I should make my own up. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm down for that. Make it my own shader. There's a couple shaders with orange, so there's actually one that I'm still trying to unlock. It's black and orange. It's very vibrant orange. <laughs> Let's see. Put that guy on. See how that feels now. Yeah. Alright, so there we go. Let me back up here. Should be good for you soon. I will go right here. I bring this curve up here just a little bit, not a gay high, because there's a piece that's going to stick down right here. I'll cover that. I might bring this up more because it looks like a little more drastic curve on the picture there. And then same with the uh, back. It looks like it needs to come up a little more. So before I, I cut those, I'm going to throw the back of the torso and look at them because they look like they're about even in the image. When I turn the picture this side. So Pop this guy back on. Nice thing is this guy is also pretty light just being padded. So. Worked with heavy plastic resin mannequins and no boy no, I want something nice and light. Excuse me while I eat my Snickers bar. Um, So, Mr. Babbitt says I should do some Captain America colors. Surprisingly, there are actually several shaders in there which make you look like Captain America. And because they hand that one out like candy, I've had at least 30 of them. So, I'm really tired of that shader. So, one of the uh, PvP handouts, and I play a lot of PvP. Well, my favorite faction is Dead Orbit, which is going to be black, 
white and very, very dark blue. And then they've got New Monarchy, which is red and white, so they do that. There's that. And then there's also Future War Cult, which, uh, I don't like that, they're purple, gold, and orange, and white. So I could do a faction. Uh, what else? There's Crucible, which... Eh, I don't want to do Crucible. <laughs> um, the... Vanguard stuff actually right now looks uh, it's got some kind of camo on it which looks pretty cool so I could do that I could do some kind of more militaristic thing make it a little more serious rather than fun and bright um, my fusion rifle is red though red and black so I could stick with that and just kind of base something like off my fusion rifle and do some kind of red and black looking at armor so we'll see we'll have fun with it so I think uh, I'll do the armor first before I start playing around with color ideas. I'll get some swatches and we'll do some... We'll, uh, we'll have a whole stream just deciding that. I'm deciding some color schemes or something. So, alright. Chatter white. No, I'm not doing chatter white. It's just, just all bright white. Because then after one day it's going to be all nasty and dirty. And knowing me, I'm going to spill something all over it and stain my costume. <laughs> Uh, the undersuit I'm going to be doing is just gray and black, because most of them are kind of a standard gray and black. So just keeping it simple, um, kind of a bluish, grayish color, and then a nice black. And uh, I don't want to have flat colors or anything, like just all spandex or all one color. So I'm doing, uh, it's all moisture wicking. It was very important to me that the undersuit breathe and, and not just trap in my sweat, because it's not. I've worn costumes before where I have had to, uh, I wore... Genius, it was upholstery, it was faux leather upholstery, and uh, I was swimming in my own sweat after a couple hours, and it was the most disgusting thing ever. So, this time around, I'm like, no, comfort all the way. I want to be able to sit down, I want my skin to breathe, I don't want to be soaking in my own sweat. So, moisture wicking um, fabric is important, and also like sports kind of fabric. So, I got three fabrics I'm gonna have the undersuit part, like the form bodysuit. And then I'm going to have all the different pieces on there all going to be moisture wicking. And they're all cool different kind of textures and look different. So it gives it some more dimension and depth. And then I'm going to pad sections with kind of like the musculature or the padding around there. I'm going to do that and cover that up. So it's going to be like a multicolor with padding on it for the undersuit. So really nice. And anywhere where armor is covering it, another fun fact thing you can do uh, to help it breathe is it's going to be like almost a fishnet, just very thin material, because it's going to be armor covering it, you're not going to see it, and it's going to let that breathe, and there's no reason to double up. Like, just because it looks like the padding goes all the way up, does not mean I actually have to do that. So, this whole section right here is just going to be a window with just a mesh over it, so that I can my skin can breathe, and I can vent better, and if I just pop my armor like that, get the air flowing through there, it'll be nice and comfortable. So, that was uh, really important that I have that. <clears throat> Red and black digicamo. <laughs> Coffee stained to guardians. Red and black could be pretty cool. I could do red with the black part, kind of a digicamo. Kind of a grayish black. Of course, I could always do Seahawk colors joking. <laughs> Alright, so where was I? I was taping this guy back up. Big conventions coming up. We got Dragon Con, and there is Pax Prime. Who am I going to see at Pax Prime, or who's going to Dragon Con? I will not be at Dragon Con this year, sadly, but I will be at Pax Prime. So, who am I going to see at Pax Prime? Any of you going to Pax Prime? It is in Seattle, in the last week of August. So I have to get this whole guy done for that time. I can do it, though. I can do it. All right. Alright, oh, well, as I look at the camera there. Let's see, get 
closer without getting too close. There we go. All right. So, get some more points on that. There we go. So, popping back over to my reference image. So that's about my belt line, right there. I think I'll try to go Probably just gonna pop this guy off, split them apart, and make a pattern on them. And then I only need one side because I'm just gonna do a mirror pattern and flip that over. Back here, we're gonna bring up to. So it's right here. I'm gonna bring that up to right about there. Just go straight across. too much wider because then if I try to bring my arms forward they're gonna hit right inside they're gonna hit right inside here on the arms so I want that to stay like that so I might just modify this to be a little longer because in game they can ignore physics and that can that can clip no problem. I also want to make sure that I'm maintaining this curve right here, and the angle of that's at. So it's going on about there. Actually, it's a little flatter on this side. So now, got that, figured out where to cut that off. Back over my armor here. Hello Kitty chest piece. I don't know, I don't see it. Hello Kitty chest I don't, I don't see a Hello Kitty chest piece.
So uh, the reason I'm not going to Dragon Con this year is um, one, my cat and his wonderful vet bills he's caused, and it just hasn't been in the schedule and the budget. So, but uh, we are going to go to PAX this year. So you guys will see me there and uh, be hanging around wearing this guy most of the time. I might throw my cultist on, so we'll see. Um, yeah. So. Back. Come back over here. Hmm. Might. There's also this collar which comes up here. And yeah, here we go. Use this. So let's swap this guy around. Yeah, there's this collar that's going to come back up in here. I'm wondering. I think I might bring this whole back piece in on it. To do that, I might just make a line that comes right here. So that way I don't have to refix that. If I do like a V-shape here, and I'll bring it like that, should bring that back in a bit. So it'll go from here to about here. That might fit better. I'm gonna try that. That might be better. I also want a more curved there too. Yeah, I'm gonna take it. So let's see, I'm going on this side. I'm going to bring it in too much because I have to remember if I bring it in on this side, I'm going to double it up over on this side. This one. That's good. Should kind of help bring it in. I think I'm ready to pop this guy off and rework my pattern so I'm going to bring it back in right about there and that's more where I want it to have so much of a shape. I'm just going to bring it back in like that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to pop this guy off. Fit, I think. I think we're good after that. I also think this needs to be a little straighter, so much like these. That's gonna come up a little bit. I have to remember that. Just pop this guy off. I'm gonna move him out of the way. Back over here. Use the camera. Bring it right down here, so you guys can see what I'm doing. Just stop out over here. I'm gonna take up some room. Hey, ketchup and mustard. Yes, I am making Titan armor from Destiny. It's not one particular set. It is a mixed match of armor. So if you want to see what I'm making, you can go on my page, WM Armory, uh, on my Facebook page, and I've got pictures up there of what I'm working on. So, uh, or what it's going to look like when it's entirely done. So let's go back over here to Justice Kayla. All right. Okay. Go get this guy. I'm gonna pop him apart. And once I have this done and I'm happy with the shape here, there's like pads and pieces along here that I'll start drawing on and figure that out. And then I'll start working on the other layer and kind of work my way up. 
And once I have those shapes, then I'll start worrying about the detail layers and like adding the thinner layers of craft foam to create the, the rivets or the plates or the buckles or the, the other accessories on the armor. So that'll be fast. Right now I want to get the base shapes and the angles, the curves and all that. So that's that's my focus with this right now. If I get an unstraight line here, I know what the curve or the line is supposed to look like. I can correct that as I'm making the pattern. So let's just pull this guy apart. is just a test piece. One right on there. This is my front right. And I'm going to grab the back piece. I'll make sure I grab the same right side that I drew. Uh, do I ever use hot wire to cut foam? Um, no, not with this foam. Um, this stuff kind of melts, it's nasty. Hot wire um, doesn't work so well on this. At least I, I used to use a, like a heat knife, which is basically a soldering iron with an X-Acto blade on it. And it gets dull so fast, and it just, if you don't go at a steady enough pace, you'll get kind of uneven lines because it's heating up. Um, so I just find that this is the best way to cut the foam. Uh, if I need other shapes or anything, I've got the, the scroll saw back there. Um, if you have access to it, you can actually use on the thinner stuff a laser cutter to, to cut this stuff. That doesn't work so well on the thick stuff because it takes several passes, so your edges will be kind of zigzag as it cuts through numerous layers or goes through numerous passes.
Now, so I have a nice curve, I'll use this side of this as a guide. So I have a little more dexterity control. I'm going to use this knife here. It's very important that I do my registration marks so that this lines up perfectly or else when I put my edges back together, instead of being nice and, and uniform, they want to get to the end, they could be like that. So to make sure I have those lines in there because this is kind of a curved shape that I'm putting together. So these stayed in. i got to make these ones a little bit easier though. Using a knife, I'm cutting a little V-shape out. I don't want to go too deep in the registration lines, just enough to get the point across. So I also need a little extension here. I'm going to grab some scrap. I'm going to get my piece here, figure out how much of an extension I need. Hey, Lewis, how's it going? All right, grab my other armor over here that I modified. Let's uh, figure out how much of an extension I need. some uh, spray adhesive just on the back here. Stuff is great for just pulling paper together, doing paper pattern. Sometimes I'll use kind of a thin piece papery stuff, but I like uh, this right here. Hey, I threw more stuff around. Hey, that's pretty sturdy. So, you like to use this stuff for making patterns. It's got a one inch grid on it. It's actually a game mat, like a disposable game mat. It's super, super thin. Now you can kind of see the light through there. Um, but it's super thin. So what I'll do is I'll draw my patterns on here and then I'll spray it onto something a little sturdier like this. But I use this uh, Super 77 to spray that.
secure them in the front. I'll just use a little clear packing tape. Um, when I'm cutting the foam, this is just using a pattern. I usually use this for just like little straight lines or thinner foam. Uh, when I'm doing curves like this, cutting foam, uh, I, I prefer to use a bandsaw. Um, but uh, just something like this, I'll, I'll score it. I won't have it as long because it will curve a lot, so I'll have it a little shorter and bring it up more at an angle and make sure it's really sharp. And just to make sure that it's not going at an angle, I will score it and do it a couple times, but then you might have to go back over with the Dremel and smooth all this out. But uh, this is just one pass with a bandsaw. It's uh, much more preferred. If you can get one or you have access to a bandsaw, a bland bandsaw. <laughs> a bandsaw with a high TPI blade or a teeth per square inch. Um, the ones that are meant for metal or plastic work best with foam. And you'll get a really nice, I don't, I don't even sand that afterwards. I just cut with the bandsaw there. It works great. All my patterns now are cut out with the bandsaw. Um, if I have any weird, like uh, small, tight little corners or angles or circles or anything, I'll use or interior circles. I'll use the scroll saw. Uh, the reason uh, for interior cir interior, I cannot talk today. The reason uh, interior circles, so like a loop or a hole or a trigger well for a gun, is with the scroll saw. You can dis uh, you can take apart one side of the blade put your piece in there, you drill a hole first, it's, you feed the blade through, you reattach it at the top, and then you can go and cut out your piece, the interior, dismantle it again, and pop that back out. Um, you can't do that though with a bandsaw, uh, because it's just one solid loop, it's a band, um, so you can't piece that through there. Uh, and also the blade's much thicker, so you can't get tight angles. The scroll saw, it's a very thin blade, so you can get very tight angles and tight turns. Um, but the, the blades, you can probably get a higher CPI blade that'll work really well with foam. Um, so one's for more detail, and the other one is just for cutting out basic shapes and patterns. But I would at least recommend a bandsaw. If you can get them for fairly affordable, I think the skill saw or the skill brand that we have, you know, Red Guy over there, um, it's about 140 or so, and it does the job just fine. Uh, the nice thing is it has an angle on it, so the platform that you're cutting, you can adjust the angle all the way to 45 and 90, so you can have uh, whatever bevel you want on there, and you don't actually have to sit there and measure it and cut it out. So it is a lifesaver. It cuts foam great. gets the job done. Hey, VexFX, how's it going? This this is for an event. I'm doing this for PAX and for whatever cons after that. So, I uh, play a Titan. It's my second favorite class. My preferred class is a Warlock, but uh, more fabric there. And my girlfriend said she's definitely not going to sew me that. <laughs> so, I'm doing this. But I love the look of the Titan gear. It's pretty sweet. Gonna go ahead and do the Titan. And that's actually my Titan that you see in the picture there. Just a sliver more there. Yeah, having a workshop area is 
very beneficial. I did this when I started in just my apartment when I was living in Tucson. I had a setup in my bedroom, and actually you can go on wmarmory.com and you can go to my tutorials, scroll back a couple to the tutorials, the blog section, and you can find a uh, blog post that I did on a weekly tip to make your own dust collector. This is the model or the setup that I used in my apartment so when I was sanding EVA foam I didn't get dust everywhere because it is in my bedroom. Um, and I did all my sanding and everything in there and I had a shop back hooked up to that. But I show how I did the entire setup, but like the very simplest, cheapest version of it. So you can go check that out and make your own setup if you don't have a shop space. But uh, having a shop space definitely helps. But uh, you can most certainly get by with just a Dremel and a heat gun and uh, a patio grinding on. Yeah, see, Yeti in here talking about how the Titan is the superior class, but I'll tell you what, my Warlock, without overshields, can withstand your shoulder rush. Because I got the Ram helmet. If you don't play Destiny, there is this helmet that basically makes the Warlock the toughest class in the game. They're already a pain in the ass to deal with. But Warlocks are pretty damn fun to play, and they're tough. I don't know. I would argue Warlocks. But that's my bias opinion. Alright. So there we go. I got my modified piece. I brought this up some. I tapered this top in, and I curved it around there. And then I also had a little extension here for the shoulder area. So now I'm going to do the modifications for the front right piece. So yet you say that you'll wear those boots and I can't survive, which is absolutely correct. I cannot survive a shoulder charge from the Paragon Grieve boots. However, if you're wearing those in PvP, you're missing out on armamentarium. I would much rather have armamentarium. So let's see. I brought this in. So I'm going to bring this guy in here. Oh, just stick my head right in the camera there. So graceful. Something I got to get used to. Where that damn camera's at? What else? Ah, that's right, I wanted to straighten this out. So... Find the end of this. Which subclass do I prefer? Um, for fun, I think the Void is a blast for the Warlocks. However, if I'm doing PvP, I'm all about the solar build. My current tactic for PvP, if you guys play PvP, is I use Thorn, because I'm that asshole. And with Thorn, I like to use um, the... They're called Firebolt Grenades, but you chuck them and it fires out three projectiles, auto-hits people, and I have the Viking Funeral. So the whole idea is it's a poison blow build. I throw my grenade out, it tags somebody, it sets them on fire, and then I tag them with Thorn, and it keeps ticking, so it's a damage over time thing. And uh, when I use my super ability and I'm just chucking out grenades left and right, I can clear a room pretty fast. The nice thing is, I don't have to see you, I just have to know somebody's in that room. So that's, that's my build. That's what I prefer. And when the change goes through for the nerfing of guns, I'll probably switch back to using Red Death. Or I've got some uh, Vaulted Glass exotics. Not exotics. Vaulted Glass guns I'll use.
What camera am I using? Is a question in chat right now. This is the Logitech C9. Uh, crap balls. This is the. Let me double check. I think it's like the C90. It's a, it's the Logitech camera you can get on. Amazon has it. Uh, C920, that's it. It is the C920 Logitech camera. And the camera right here, this little guy, which has my face and is picking up a sound, is my older webcam I've had for a couple years. It's just something simple, but I figured the detail should be here and not there. So you guys should see what I'm working on. You don't need to see my face in high def. It's nothing special. So, let's see. So brought that up a bit. Okay. I think we are good to go, so now I'm going to trace these guys out and clean up a bit of this mess here. Totally missed. Man, I am just on top of it today. So I've got my front back patterns here that I have adjusted based off the tries I've had, and this is uh, try number three. been a trial and error build, kind of piecing it together, slowly seeing what fits. And even if, I know a lot of people think, well, why not just take the Pepe Kerr file right out of the game there, they have it. So the proportions they have in video games are nowhere near real life. Surprise! Uh, a lot of the times they will elongate torsos, they'll widen things, they'll, they'll do a lot of things to make it look cooler than in, in, in real life if you were to wear it. Plus, they can ignore physics, so large shoulder pads can clip into armor. So what I have to do is I have to interpret that, and I have to make it fit for me and my proportions. So it makes it a little more trial and error to try to get it to fit good and look good on me, as opposed to just taking it exactly directly from the game. I did that with my very first costume, and it was extremely difficult to go upstairs. And I even tried to alter it some, but it was a learning process. I haven't read about the, the C930 um, camera. Uh, this C920 was recommended to me uh, by some people who do live stream stuff. It seems to be a pretty popular one. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. I got it used for a little cheap, a little cheaper. Um, it works just fine. So, and right now, as I'm beginning all this setup, it's, it works. It does what I need it to, so I'm, I'm content with it. So. And if you guys want to improve the show and maybe have two of these cameras set up and better audio, maybe I can have some music going and some better software, uh, please consider becoming a Patreon on my Patreon. Becoming a patron on my Patreon. You can go on over. I've got a link there underneath my uh, underneath my channel. Or if you go on wmarmory.com live stream, you can see there. And uh, go ahead and become a patron. If you uh, want to help out but you can't donate, then spread the word out there share it other people let them know what's going on if you want to see more live streams more tutorials you want to ask me questions about making props and costumes and get my advice on stuff on making those props and costumes then uh please consider helping out there everything goes into the show makes the show better makes it so i do the show more often and for longer periods of time let's do more videos more tutorial more content do a lot of tips to help you guys make costumes or just watch me do awesome art stuff so Okay, Ron, Spiffs, how's it going? Did I say that right? Spiffs? Spliffs! Okay, Ron, Spliffs. Hadjashir one. Yes, I completely understand. Yeah, like, it may look, like, perfect to the game, but their physics don't work, so, like, the, the, uh, the legs in the costume I first did, they just like the legs the, from the video game, but they went all the way up to the back of my knee, so I couldn't really bend, uh, and the abs were just like a complete solid piece. So if I had to, to try to get my phone, I had to do these crazy splits to try to lean over and grab my phone. So after that, everything was an articulated piece. So. Visual Jamie, yay! This is your first time catching one of my live streams. Well, I hope you enjoyed. We've got about 30 minutes left. So right now I'm working on my Titan armor. 
working on the chest piece here. So this is the front right and the back right. This is the third attempt I have done at uh, sizing and fitting. So I'm going to trace these guys out now on a nice clean piece of foam. And I've set this guy's aside to cut. So. Oh, that's one thing I forgot to do on this. Well, I remember I brought this little piece up here, the test piece, so let's transfer that. I don't have any let out. Awesome sauce. So the next costume I want to do for myself after this is uh, how many people in chat are familiar with the game War Machine? Tabletop war game. They've got a video game. They've got a card game. They've got a role playing game. How many are familiar with that system? Because I would really like to do a Warcaster. If you're not familiar with the Warcasters, these badass battle mages that command giant robots. Uh, it's kind of a industrial fantasy, a really cool setting, really awesome art miniatures. Um, but uh, I want to do a new character that came out for that game. He's got a really sweet set of armor. So that's my goal next do that. But he's got some crazy proportions, so I don't know if I'm going to do that guy as a travel piece. He might be for local conventions only. So if you guys are familiar with the faction Retribution, my plan is to do Thyron. He's uh, like a seven foot tall elf guy with some crazy cool armor and some green glowy bits. So like this guy doesn't have many lights. That guy has like Tron lights going on all over him, so that's going to be fun. So, uh, we'll see how well that works <laughs> But I've got some help. So, my shop mate, uh, Bill Duran, his brother Rob, just getting into all the fancy electronic stuff, so he's going to give me some advice. But, uh, yeah, let me find the link for that guy, Thyron. He is pretty cool looking. He's got this nice kind of copper color. But I saw that, and I immediately like that guy. That guy's armor, I want to make that. So, if you go to privateerpress.com and go to their war machine... The gallery, and the faction is Retribution and Warcasters. And let that take forever to load. Alright, scroll on down. There he is, Thyron, the Sword of Truth. Check him out right there. This guy up in the chat. Boom, check that out. That is the guy I want to try to do. It's going to be a blast because the proportions are going to be crazy. Especially that sword. That's like a. That's my height sword. It's huge. How did the Mad Max mask turn out? Let's check that out. There we go. So I added an adjustable strap back here. You can see a little slider. Try to dirty these guys up. And then a little buckle in the back here that goes around the neck. Where are we at? We're right there. A little buckle that goes around the back of the neck. So it's pretty similar to how the uh, respirator would fit on. So figured it's his respirator. So why not make it? Like a respirator. And how do I get those hoses and grun so grungy and dirty? I rolled them around in the driveway. Shh. Authentic dirt. Thanks, guys. Yes, Thyron is pretty much a ninja robot thing, and yeah, he kind of does look a little bit like Guyver. Man, 
method weathering. That's right. That was uh, in a, a web series as an extra in the background. And the uh, the scene was we were supposed to get like shot. We were looking grungy and dirty. But I had to be grungy and dirty because I was supposed to be like out in the field, some like sci-fi paramilitary. And uh, I got all my gear on. And this is my own personal gear I brought, like airsoft kind of stuff. And uh, you know, old military gear. And uh, the girl in makeup was like, oh, I have some fake dirt we can use. And I'm like, there's no need. So I just laid on the ground and start rolling around because we were out in the boonies. So authentic dirt and weathering. But that was a lot of fun. That was part of the, uh, the deal. Is uh, I made some props for it. And I was like, I want to get killed. So <laughs> I got to be a background guy that gets, uh, gets shot all the way through and gored. So it was pretty fun and ridiculous. Okay, so got these guys. Let's get the foam out. Oh. This is EVA foam floor mats. This is the majority of what I work with. Uh, we're gonna start ordering sheets without this texture on the side because nine times out of ten, I'm taking this stuff off. Because if you want to sandwich the foam together, you have to take that off. It's a pain in the ass. And you can order it, but you have to order it in bulk, which is why uh, Shopmate and I are gonna put in a big order for this stuff. But these work just fine. They work good. Uh, and I get these off WeSellMats.com, or you can go on Amazon. WeSellMats has, uh, has um, this EVA foam there. You can get it different thicknesses, different colors. They even have some different textures, but sadly they do not sell it without this texture. Um, and they come in six packs, or in six sheets in a pack for about 20. Uh, now I know what people say is, but you can get a pack of four from Harbor Freight for $10, and you absolutely can. But they're half as good as these, and their quality is pretty crappy. Um, they're very porous, they don't hold a shape too well, and they're much squishier and flimsier. I like this, it's a lot rigid, it's a lot stiffer. I am a huge fan of the We Sell Matte stuff. And honestly, you're getting good quality sheets for six instead of four in a pack if you go to Lowe's for the same price. Yeah, you do have to pay shipping, but if you're buying like five, six packs, six sheets each, it's well worth it. So, that's where I get my phone from. Pop this on there. And since I'm not using the texture on the other side, it has no reference. It doesn't matter which direction I do this so the texture lines up. If I'm using the texture on the other side, I will try to make it coordinate so that it seams up pretty nice and the texture is lined up. Because you don't want one texture going this way and the other texture is going that way and you line it up. People are going to know. So, but I'm not using that, so I can use this however. So when I'm transferring patterns, I don't like to use a Sharpie because the Sharpie is too thick. I use just a big pen. I buy bulk packs of these because they go real fast. They're kind of crappy. Um, but uh, the key is not pressing too hard, but they do a nice, thin, fine line. They work just fine. And they're really cheap. Uh, I was going to get into Airsoft, so I bought some stuff for it. I had a lot of friends in LA who were into it. Uh, I started kind of considering it. I've done a lot of like, done other things. I've done paintball and other things before, but I ended up not getting into it because it was another money sink, and I already have expensive hobbies. So it was more the the money sink that deterred me. Because I play war games, and those miniatures are not cheap. And actually, I was thinking of uh, maybe once a month coming on here and building and painting miniatures. Just having a live stream where I come on and I paint miniatures. It'll be a good way to paint my army up because I've got a ton of models, none of them are painted. So I'm mark on here. And I use the Sharpie for marking words and making notes because it won't leave an indent. This pen will leave an indent, so if I drew across here and I intend on using a painting the surface, you're still going to see the indentation on the line. So I just use a marker for that, and that is front right. It's an FR. BT9D, how's it going?
I didn't realize that there was a miniature painting community on here. I want to call myself a painting master. I mean, I get the job done. But uh, I think my biggest issue is I hate painting the same guy ten times when I'm painting units. Okay, painting units. I've also recently started painting miniatures with an airbrush, so that's something new. Fortunately, if you were here for the last stream, you got to witness my air compressor crapping out, so still got to order a new one of those. That is front left, FL. I don't think this guy's going to fit. Oh, 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 uh, uh, no. Nope. Hey, wait, try this way. Try this way. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. Yep. Nope, nope. Wait. Oh, forget it. <laughs> That's going to be a pain. So I use the bandsaw, and I don't want to have this big giant sheet. So what I try to do is just cut the basic shape around it out. So it's a lot easier to manage and to work with when I'm trying to cut it out of that. So I'll just trim that down. And then instead, that's what I work with when I'm cutting out the bandsaw. There we go, so this guy's saying. Oh god. I missed again. Alright, put this guy on here. Oh, BT90 is hosting. Thanks, man. That's awesome. Well, the more the merrier. Everybody come on in. I'm just laying out patterns and foam. If you guys are just coming in and are curious as to what I am making, uh, you can check out Facebook, WM Armory. The link for that is below my channel, and that has a picture of what I'm working on. I'm doing armor from uh, Destiny. This is going to be a Titan this is actually the armor my Titan is currently wearing. So I'm working on the under piece right now. Done three attempts so far. Uh, a lot of test fitting and a slight adjusting of this. back right. Mark that so I know which side it goes to. Let's see, can I get these both to fit? Yes, I can. Get plenty of room. Okay. Oh, one thing I forgot on the other pieces. I forgot. I have my registration marks. I'll have to grab those. Registration marks are very important so that you can line up your piece as you're gluing it together. That way nothing gets all screwed up and uneven. Shit. Ah, <laughs> uh, crap. I don't need two back rights. So to rectify that, Use a blue pen. So this morning, bright and early, I gotta take my shop mate, and some of you may know April will or Viking Lass. Take them all to the airport because they're going to Nerdtacular. Nerdtacular is a small little convention for podcasting that happens out in Utah every year. And they are regulars at that. So I have the shop to myself for the whole weekend. How many things will I hide in Bill's stuff? Shit. 
should be interesting. So for these, those of you who do not know, my shopmate, Punish Props, and myself, uh, a lot of shenanigans goes on. Mostly I hide, or draw and hide phallic shaped objects all over his workspace, and he does the same to mine. And for about you know, several months, he had no idea that there was one right above his head. Fun times. So we're all adults here. We're just a couple of guys in our 30s still laughing at fart jokes. Alright. There we go. Got that. Now I'm going to cut apart this other chest piece. As I throw more fun around. I cut this guy out now. So, let's see, scissors. I'm not going to run around naked because there's plenty of sharp objects and dangerous tools here, and I would like to keep everything intact. So, uh, no to running around naked around the shop. Thank you, Hadjashir, for that recommendation. But, uh, nope, I'm currently wearing pants that you know of. I mean, I could probably live stream with my boxers and no one would know. There we go. Ah, that's totally coming apart. Oh, that's super glue that back together. That is right, Mr. Babbick. It doesn't matter how old you are, fart jokes are always funny. And if you don't think so, doubt. Fart jokes for life. Hashtag fart jokes for life. Yes, visual Jamie. Dick butts. All the dick butts. There's also at least a dick butt hidden in every ebook. Because they're all over our tools, not intentional, we just forget that they're there and they end up in books. So look carefully when I'm using tools in ebooks because you'll probably see a dick butt. That's right, you start that hashtag. Boom! Okay, and just like the other one, I only have this guy. Because I can always just flip it right over. Uh, where is my little ruler? Going back over the picture, this, because Pepkura is stupid. This is actually more of a straight line, but Pepkura put it like that. Good job, Pepkura. So what I'm going to do is straighten that out. Boom! All right, there we go. Now, get some moisture over here.
Did I just cut my finger? No, I didn't cut my fingers. I'm good. I guess I don't think so. Am I bleeding? No? Okay. Oh, that's right. One thing that I did on here, I need to transfer over, is all registration marks. Let's use scissors to cut those guys in. So that way, this guy lines up. It's especially important to do, not as much on straight things, but you certainly want to do little registration keys when you're doing curved things, because it can be really difficult to line them up. So, let's pop these guys on here. Smart asses. <laughs> Making jokes about it. Okay. What do I think of? Here we go. So little registration keys in there. About 15 minutes left. You guys got any prop making questions? Any prop costume making questions? Anything about destiny you guys want to talk about? Or anything related to what we've talked about today? Go ahead, throw that up in chat. I'll be happy to answer that. Something about pattern making or foam fabricating. I will answer all your questions to the best of my abilities. And remember, hashtag fart jokes for life. That is right, blood, sweat, and tears. And if you missed it earlier, I actually super glued my nose to the inside of the mask. Not on stream, so uh, no one to witness. Uh, I uh, was gluing the foam padding inside, and like a genius, I uh, didn't give it long enough to set, I didn't realize some of the super glue dripped down, so I put it on, and I was like, oh, this feels weird, and I'm going to take it off, and it kind of was crunchy, and it pulled some of the inside off, uh, and I had to, a giant clump of cured super glue on the tip of my nose. Luckily, my shop aid has this stuff called Uncure, so I was able to rub that all over and slowly peel it off. So my nose is a little red on the tip today, because uh, I am a freaking genius. Be careful working with glue and super glue. Make sure you're not gluing yourself anything, guys. It can rip skin off. The fumes are not great. Do as I say, not as I do. How to make a curved bevel for foam edge. Uh, well, Mr. Badmech, if you go to wmormory.com, you go to my tutorials and you scroll back a ways, and actually, you know what, let me try to find it just to save some time here. Uh, I actually did a whole thing on beveling foam, and there's another one on making a blade edge for a knife, which you could use both of those to figure out how to do an axe. 
So I'm going to pull up a couple of tutorials and tips right now, and I'm going to link those to you guys. One is going to be on doing supports for the internals, which uh, is shown. You guys can see in my hammer how I did that. And then if you go to... No, nope, that is totally... I already screwed this up. No! Tips. Here we go. Load. Alright. Scroll on back here to older entries. Yeah, one of the earlier ones is um, adding a bevel edge to foam. It talks about doing that, and all you need for that is just a Dremel. So, super easy. Um, it's a Dremel, a pen. Oh, oh. Actually, there's one. And... Perhaps make it a blue edge. There's another one. Alright, here we go. So, here it talks about making a blade edge. There's my tutorial on that. And this one talks about beveling foam. So, those two in conjunction with each other will help you to create that battle axe. And then for doing the internal supports, uh, I don't know if that one's a recent one. Uh, should be, should be that recently. Uh, but there is one on there for making internal support for your props so that they're not floppy. There we go. Internal support for your props. Oh, so these three things should help you to build that battle axe. Go ahead, check those out. Give them a read over. Um, that'll help you guys out. So we got about seven minutes left here on the show. Any last questions you guys have that I can help answer? Send you guys in the right direction. Or any good stories of gluing yourself to stuff. Happy to help. That is what I'm here for. Almost got it. RTV to a what? What glue would I suggest? Barge. Barge is a contact cement. Any kind of contact, most kind of contact cements are going to work great on foam. But overall, I would suggest barge. This stuff is phenomenal. It's a little potent, so make sure that you have a respirator or good ventilation going. Uh, but this one comes with an applicator. Uh, this guy, what's the cost of this guy? Um, you can get this guy on Amazon. I have a link in my uh, 
Um, if you go to my FAQ on the right side, it says Will's Tools. I have links to a lot of the materials and tools that I use. You should be able to find barge there. Um, this stuff is wonderful. It's a context cement, so you put a little on one side, a little on the other side. Give it a moment to get tacky, and then you slowly put it together, and it will hold. It is really good stuff. I highly recommend this. Uh, you can get this online. If you don't want to get online, you can go to um, any uh, leather supply uh, or leather... Um, anybody that like, sells leather or leather materials will have this stuff. It is a great brand, Barge Cement. So that is my recommendation for glue if you are getting into foam fabricating. <laughs> I have glued my fingers together many times putting together my miniatures. Yeah, the red one uh, is, is a little better. It's a little more potent, a little stronger. The, the blue and yellow one, I think they took some chemicals out to make it a little more um, friendly and not as hazardous and toxic, 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 but the red and yellow can is the one that people want. If you guys are super gluing stuff to yourself, there's a little... Let me grab the container before you. So if you guys are super gluing anything of any kind, there is this stuff called Uncure. You can get this at most any hobby store that sells super glues. It should have Uncure, and this will help. It doesn't it work instantly, so don't just put a drop on and rip your hands apart. You glue yourself together though, or you want to unstick a model. This stuff, it's Uncure, and you can use that. It'll slowly break away the adhesives. So I recommend that, or taking apart models, or pulling your fingers apart when you glue them together which I do constantly. I don't know how many evenings I come home and I can't feel my fingertips because they're just covered in super glue. Yeah, there is a uh, different stuff in, I think there's two different kinds of really good uh, context event if you are in the UK area. Um, and Artie Fakes, I know, uses them and recommends them. Uh, that is a foam fabricator located in the UK area. So check there. And uh, yeah. Uh, also, I know Punish Props is going to start doing this. He's going to put together a nice grid for wherever you live in the world, what the equivalent is. Because I know some people can't get EVA foam, but it's called something else. Or you can't get barge cement, but they have something that's very similar. So all those international and proprietary brands and whatnot. So uh, go to your local hardware store or leather. Um, leather worker, leather supply store, whatever context cement they have should be just fine too. So if it's not barge, whatever they have. So check there, but context cement is the type of glue you should be using. Red and white, uh, no, this just happens to be the color pack that came with red, yellow, and blue. This is the cardboard I'm using to make patterns on. I like doing patterns out of this stuff because it's rigid. It doesn't get flimsy, so when I put my hand down, I don't have to worry about this really shifting a whole lot, so. Space Wizard. What are you doing, Space Wizard? <laughs> you need adults to tell you what to do. I do too, it's true. I don't I don't know what I would do without an adult. A lot of times I need an adult. Alright guys, well we've got a minute left. Any last questions you guys wanna squeeze in? Uh, and we'll close the stream and call it good and uh, we'll see how it's going. I might do this on uh, Friday. We'll see. But, uh, if you guys enjoyed this and you want to see more live streams, want to see me build stuff, want to see me paint stuff, want to help the quality and improve the show, uh, better cameras, better software, better sound, better lighting, better just all around setup, more frequent, then please go on over to my Patreon and check that out. Uh, donate a dollar here or there. Any little bit helps. If you want to help and don't want to, but don't want to donate, then please just spread the word around. Uh, any little bit helps, and it goes into the show and making it better. Thank you guys so much for coming. I really appreciate you guys coming here and hanging out with me while I figure this this whole armor suit out. And uh, I'm just making the show fun and enjoyable. I really like doing this stuff, and I like to do it more. So hope you guys have a good one. Have a good uh, rest of the week, and maybe I'll see you guys on Friday. All right, everybody, take it easy.